Hi, I'm Francesc and this is Just for Funk. So welcome to episode two. As I said in episode zero, the goal of this series is to hack on stuff, not necessarily to review Go code, even though uh, people loved it. So probably I will keep on doing it. If you have some ideas on code to review, send them away. Um, I'm curious about it. I might make more videos about that. But on this episode, my plan is to do something completely different. My plan is to not only record here in my house, but also to hack my house. I want to make it so when people want to get into my house, if they know a password, the door will open magically for them. Crazy. So what I want to do is basically right now, it, it works already through the phone. So when someone rings downstairs, rings the door, uh, what actually happens is that there's a phone call made to a phone number, which is a Google voice number that I have that redirects it to my phone number. That then I can answer and say, who is this? And if it's someone that I want to let in, I press on the number nine and that opens the door downstairs. Easy. So what I want to do is I want to do that automatically. And I'm going to try, I'm going to have two different phases. The first one, which is the easy one, and which is an awful idea, it, it is that I will just let anyone in. So if anyone rings, I want some server machine, don't know yet, uh, to answer that phone call and just press nine directly. So the door downstairs will magically open. That is an awful idea. You should never do it because then you will let anyone get in your house. But um, the second phase, what I want to add is add speech recognition uh, using a Google Cloud Speech API to be able to recognize what people are saying. And if they're saying what is the passphrase, which I still have not decided, then the door opens. Otherwise, they probably the phone call gets redirected to my phone so I can answer and say, hey, who's there and let them in or not, according to who they are. So. How do we make this happen? Well, uh, everything I know so far is that I'm going to use the Google Cloud Speech API because I like it a lot. I've been using it, and it's so simple to use. Uh, there's a JSON API, a REST API. So if you know how to send JSON and encode an MP3, then you're good. Uh, and then on the other side, I need to also handle uh, the phone calls. And to do that, I'm going to be using Twilio that I've never used ever before. So we'll see how that goes. I hope it's going to be quite easy. I've heard a lot of a lot of good things about Twilio, so I could be really surprised if it was so complicated to use. OK, sounds good. So let's get started. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see how Twilio works. How do we do that? Well, we go check the documentation out. Uh, let's see, docs and help. There's a quick start. I like quick starts. And programmable voice quick start, get started making outbound phone calls. No, that is not what I want. I want to receive phone calls. Uh, program Twilio client tweaks. Uh, no. Oh, wait. So programmable voice quick start is get started making outbound phone calls and handling income phone calls from your favorite server-side programming language. There's PHP, C Sharp, Java, Python, and Ruby. There's no Go, but I don't care. I'm still going to write it in Go because I don't think it's that hard, really. OK, so let's see how this works. So this uses a TwiML, which I guess is like XML, but for Twilio, just assuming. Uh, and it allows you to use some some languages, but not the ones I want. OK, so how to really interact with your application. This part is the interesting part. When a phone call starts, on, there is a user input, like a key press or dial ends. Twilio makes an HTTP get or post to your web server, as specified by your app. If you use HTTP post, Twilio passes parameters that form encoded variables in the body of the post. If you use HTTP get, Parameters are passed in the URL query string. OK, let's, good at, let's look at a real example. Uh, so hello, monkey. So what we need to do is we want to, I guess, this PHP. <laughs> so we're going to send the content type for the HTTP response is going to be text XML. 
Then we have an XML document that has response, say hello, response, cool. So at this point, I want to serve uh, this pretty much a static document. I'm gonna use it as a static document for now. And uh, what I want to do is I want to serve this. How could I do this? Uh, well, you know, let's make it the easiest way I know, which is just write a simple Go program that will just serve this regardless of what you ask for. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to uh, go to my Go path, which happens to be my home, so nothing really magic here. And then I'm gonna go to github.com slash campoy. I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to call it uh, Magic Gate. It's not really magic, but whatever. I like it, Magic Gate better than Speech Gate. Uh, OK, so getting it. Cool. So now we have my project is started. Let me open Visual Code. So I'm going to be working on this. I'm going to create a new file um, in the Go. And that's going to be my function main. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to handle any request with my handler and listen and serve uh, localhost 8080, you know, log fatal. We have the HTTP handle function. It's saying for whatever request, request that starts with forward slash, which is any request, just use the handler that we have to define now. So handler which needs to have this type uh, response writer and an HCP request and then uh, say that you want to listen and serve on localhost 8080 uh, using the default max so it will say whatever I've defined before and if that fails just log fatal because uh, the only way a web server could stop in my case is by failing miserably, basically. Cool. So now what I want to do is my content. I'm going to create a constant for now. Content. It's going to be this file. Uh, the content I'll figure out later. But basically, we're going to have this XML right here. Uh, let me drop all the special things because this is actually just static, so we don't need to do any magic there. Uh, let me drop that. Hello, monkey. Okay, so now I want to write into the output my content. Uh, and just to make sure, I'm going to set content type to text XML. And that is wrong because header is a function. So let's try that. Let's try to run it. If I just do go install, that will generate a magic gate binary. And if I run it, if nothing complains, I guess it's because it's working. Uh, let's try doing curl on localhost. 8080. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Uh, I want to see that is uh, content type text XML. So that is good. Good job. Now we have this, and I want to test it. So how does how do we make it work? We need to go to the phone numbers page and need to sign in here. Okay, so once you log in, if it's the first time that you log in, you will not have any Twilio phone numbers. So I'm gonna buy a new Twilio number. I'm gonna start with that. Uh, sure, this one works. Oh, there's different prices. Uh, which one is the cheapest one? <laughs> I didn't know you could get cheaper ones. Uh, I just need voice. So that is everything I asked for. So it's only $1 per month. That is affordable good okay so i'm gonna get this one the first one okay i'm gonna buy that number uh and gonna set it up and when i set it up i have this request url 
And that request URL is where my requests are going to be sent whenever a phone call happens. So if I call this phone number right now, 620-628-3234, let's see. Thanks for the call. Configure your number's voice URL to change this message. Let us know if we can help you in any way during your development. That is nice. Cool. So basically, we get a message saying, yeah, if you want to make sure that your app works the way you want, you need to change the request URL, which is the one here. So I want now to change my request URL to point to my server. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to deploy this to App Engine. And I'm going to deploy it to App Engine just because it's actually the simplest way to get uh, some Go code running. There's no, there's no special thing that I need to make this work. So App Engine is perfect. How do I make this an App Engine app? Uh, I need one extra file. It's app.yaml. So that's going to have runtime is Go. Uh, API version is go one. What else? Uh, handlers is for whatever URL. Use the script underscore go app, which corresponds to our go application. So that's easy. And then I need to change this to say something else. So I'm going to change the name of the package to magic gate because this is not a main package anymore. It's a library. There's no main function, but we can use it. And we don't get to choose uh, on what port we're listening. So we just remove this line. That's it. Now this is an App Engine app. Quite simple, right? Now I can use Go App Serve to run it locally. But this is not really that magic, right? Like uh, it will still do exactly the same thing it was doing before. It's running localhost 8080. So nothing crazy, but there's something pretty cool, which is I can now deploy it to App Engine very easily. So how do we do that? So I'm going to go to console.cloud.google.com. And I'm going to create a new project. OK, so my new project is going to be called Magic Gate. And that, that project ID is available. Cool. OK, so now I'm creating a new project. And that new project will allow me to deploy my App Engine app directly there. So how do you do that? Very simple. So now that our application is no more a standalone HTTP server, but instead is an app, uh, an app Engine app, on top of being able to run it locally with Go App Serve, we can also deploy it to production doing Go App Deploy dash dash application the name of our application is going to be Magic Gate, as we had it before. And the version, I'm going to go with version 1. Now, this will send all the files to, uh, to some remote servers, App Engine servers. The code will be compiled and then deployed. As we can see, starting deployment, checking deployment, deployment successful, and we are done, done, done. Cool. What did just happen? Well, what just happened is that now if we come back here on App Engine, we have a version that is running. And if we visit it, we get that XML document that we had before. And not only that, but that URL is not is now ours. So I'm gonna use that one to set it here in our Twilio console. I'm going to save. And now if I call again. Hello, monkey. Yeah. yeah. So now we get hello, monkey. And then it just uh, stops the call. Cool. So we have the first part, which is saying hello, monkey, which is cool, but not really that much. Uh, how do you make it cool? Easy. Hello, gopher. Cool. Now, if I want this to work, I need to redeploy it, right? So uh, that is pretty easy. Just run the same command again, and it's pretty fast. So in a minute, we should be able to then call again. But before that, I also want to be able to dial the number 9, uh, which will actually open the door. 
So if we check the documentation, let's see, Twilio, Twilio. I think the documentation for TwiML, there you go. We have dial, I don't know the party. Actually, what about play? Okay, that is <laughs> that is not very expected, but uh, play has digits. Uh, kind of makes sense if you know how phone numbers work. Like if you press a number, it sends an audio signal that is interpreted as a number. So kind of makes sense, but it's kind of weird too. So according to these, we should be able to do play digits nine. Play. Let's redeploy it again once more and call the phone number. Hello, Gopher. Nice. Okay, so now it's the moment of truth where I'm gonna go downstairs and try to open the door. So I'm, I'm at my door and I'm gonna try to open it without any keys. Everything I'm gonna have to do is uh, just do my code to call my apartment, which I'm not gonna show for obvious reasons. And now the system is dialing. This will call my Google Voice number that will redirect to Twilio that will go and find the file that I'm serving for my computer. And hopefully we hear hello gopher and the door will magically open. Hello gopher. Nice. Can't touch this. This. Cool. So we got it working. But as I said before, right now, what happens is that anyone, literally anyone, can enter my house. They just do the code and the door rings and it opens automatically. So, not a very good idea. The next step, what I want to do is I want to make sure that they say something that I recognize as a passphrase and then the door opens. Otherwise, it redirects the phone call to my phone number and then I decide what to do with it. So how do we listen to the phone call with Twilio? 